God has a special plan and a purpose for us. We need to understand when we open the scriptures and read the scriptures, God speaks to us. God is going to show up. Unexpectedly, God is going to show up and be able to minister to you. My name is Shirley McLaurin. My name is Michelle. My name is Samantha. Hello and welcome to our Mosaic online service. The Lord is going to do a miracle in you and it is possible to see the light again. Please check us out on social media. We put together a great service for you. Creator put a system in place. The system that we call is called a prayer. Prayer is a privilege. Prayer changes things. God is anxiously waiting upon you to come. Today, 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 God is wanting to remember you. God sees what is in our hearts and minds. God sees the things that matters to him. God sees the heart. Hello and welcome to our Mosaic Today service. My name is Michelle McLaurin and it's my privilege to welcome you all once again. We have family and friends watching this program from all over the world and we are very delighted that you're able to join us today. I trust this program will bring you hope, encouragement and blessings to you and your family. Please stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. God is able.
scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 21 to 25, Isaiah 53, verse 5, and Romans 8, verses 17. If you have a Bible, please read along with me. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. May the Lord add his blessing to this word. Hey, this is David. I'm so glad you're able to join us today. We are very excited. We've been planning and preparing ourselves and we've been looking forward for this time. And again, thank you for choosing to tune in. In fact, if you're just tuning in, I want to welcome you. A special welcome. Thank you for choosing to tune in because God is thinking about you and he has a special word of wisdom. I hope you will stay all the way and see what God has in store for you. And again, it's a joy to come into your place every week. And we are here for you every week, for you and your family. We are here to, to empower, to pray, and to be able to cheer as we all lead this life that God has entrusted to us. Today, I'm going to talk about the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus or Jesus. So we wanted to unpack what that means in the name or the name of Jesus. That's what we're going to talk about. Thank you for choosing to write to us. We love to hear from you. Thank you for writing to us. Thank you for emailing it to us. We always take great delight to hear from you. We take, we take this prayer request seriously. If you communicate to us on a regular basis it shows that we are all in this together and we are excited because as God works his thing as, as God works in and through our lives we are really excited to see what God is about to do I, I know this is about halfway through the year and many of you had uh, uh, mixed emotions we had a challenging the past six months as we look into the next six months we wanted to pause and see how God is working in and through our lives we wanted to ask ourselves are we on target I'm sure in the beginning of the year, we always make uh, plans, we make some goals, we set some uh, things to accomplish, we wanted to do certain things. It's about half a time that we need to do course corrections to see if we need to make any adjustments. So it's really joy uh, that we can able to connect with us here today. And uh, thank you for choosing to write to us. And again, please note that we take your prayer requests seriously. And I want to remind you also that God also takes them very seriously. He not only is interested to communicate to us, he not only interested to listen and hear our, to our prayers, but he takes great delight. He takes immense pleasure to answer them. As Christians, we are really excited and we are good in asking. We are good in praying and interceding. But when God gives us and he wants us to receive them, he wants us to receive them with boldness. He wants us to receive them courageously. So we can, today we wanted to talk about the name of Jesus, how we can able to incorporate the benefits of being in the person or being connected to the family of God. So again, thank you for writing to us. And many of you have been partnering with us. We want to say thank you. Uh, again, as I said, uh, our scope is wide and uh, we are seriously interested to take the gospel to the nations of today. And as we partner together, we wanted to take the uniqueness of the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to many parts of the world. And uh, no matter wherever you may be, you may be in North America, you may be in the Middle East, you may be in Southeast Asia or in any Asian countries, God is interested. God is interested in your life and he wanted to, to do something 
significant. He's about to do something very unique in your life. So thank you for partnering with us. We not only want you to see this marvelous thing to take place because as often as I say that Jesus is in the business of changing lives. He is in the business of transforming lives. We want you to see God to do his transformation in many parts of the world and thank you for partnering with us we wanted to say please check out our website and again we would love to connect read the profiles catch up on the previous telecast uh, episodes and it is a, a way to connect it's always a way to grow and mature and again the goal for all of us for the goal for all Christians the goal for everyone is to become like the person of Jesus Christ my goal in life is to become like the person of Jesus Christ we, we, we are heading towards that we are we, we are moving towards that and again uh, it's a joy to connect and uh, we wanted to look at the name of Jesus today we wanted to look at the unpack the words called the name of Yeshua. That's what we will be talking about. And again, if you want to grab a pen and a paper, uh, please do that. And again, you might want to catch us that link, send it to your family and friends. We will enjoy that as well. And again, God is about to speak as we God, as God reveals his insights. I want you to have an open mind to, to write them down, to see how you can able to incorporate them, how you can able to, to practice them, to see that how your life can be enriching when we know and we understand the name of Jesus paying through credit cards paying through debit cards are a very common practice these days very seldom people carry cash or hard cash and again if you travel in the Europe if you travel in the Middle East if you travel in many Asian countries or anywhere in North America uh, we have many cards we don't want to take cash with us we have credit cards we have the debit cards and uh, we, we try to to have become a cashless society and uh, think about the context that we are living in going back a generation going back a couple of generations back People didn't have the option of credit cards. People didn't have the option of debit cards, no apps to pay. And people sometimes they would say, use my name or go to a shop and say my name and the name would carry the credit. The name would carry the power. The name would carry the authority. And it is interesting today as we focus on the name of Jesus and we want you to see how we can use the name of Jesus in our everyday lives names are very important they are very significant to our lives it defines who we are your name says a lot about you and it is interesting we love our names we love to hear about name our names if I were to summarize the names, your past, present, and the future, it, it summarizes your identity. Our identity comes in the form of a name. It is interesting if I were to say a certain names. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna say a few names, and as soon as you hear those names, uh, certain emotions would erupt. Certain emotions would come through your life. And I want you to just pause and to understand those emotions. The first one is I want you to say, is that I wanted to say Patriarch Abraham. I would say another name called Moses, another name called David. Another name called Mahatma Gandhi. Another name Nelson Mandela, Mandela. Saddam Hussein. Osama Bin Laden. Billy Graham. As we heard these names, certain emotions would erupt. Certain pictures, word pictures would come to our minds and we would try to have certain, some certain image of these names. It is interesting as we know the importance of the names. We love to hear about our names. I travel quite extensively. As I travel quite extensively, sometimes when I was in an airport, thousands of people, thousands of people, a lot of things are happening. And then in the microphone, when people call out my name, 
instantly I pick up my name. I instantly hear and fine tune and able to listen to my name and check out and go to the checkout counter. And it is interesting, we love to hear about our names. Names are important. Today, as we try to unpack the name of Jesus, what does it mean? How is that going to make an impact in our lives? As I was a child growing up, as a child growing up, I would wake up in the middle of the night, scared, uh, very terrified, unable to breathe, and with the scary thoughts, with scary images on my mind, it was like a nightmare experience. I was not quite sure. Medical doctors were saying, maybe you saw a bad movie. Medical doctors were trying to figure out and come up with a diagnostic diagnosis for that problem but some christian people uh, some of them said you've been attacked a satanic attack or could be whatever it may be but during those times i've learned when we recite the name of jesus when we have this name of jesus i did not have those nightmarish experiences Pretty soon I realized that something was in the name of Jesus. Every time you rebuke in the name of Jesus, something happens, something magical, some, some, some power is being released when we utter the name of Jesus or in the name of Jesus, something really happens. I wanted to unpack that today. In the scripture, there are 256 times names were written or talked about the person of Jesus. 256 times the names were uttered, or names were given in the Bible for Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus can change lives. The name of Jesus can transform lives. God wants us to use the name of Jesus in everything that we do. Even if you give a cup of cold water, even if you give a cup of tea in the name of Jesus, the Bible says there's a reward. There is a, a gift awaits. Because when you use the word in the name of Jesus, power is being released. We understand the importance of this. The name of Jesus can change lives, can transform lives. So we wanted to see what are the effects of the power of Jesus or the name of Jesus. The first one I wanted to share with you is that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. You might be asking, David, what type of power are we talking about? This power is unlimited power. This power is unending power. This power is adequate power. This power is never going to run dry. I'll tell you, in fact, if you have a bank account, let's say if you have a, a checking account, and if your bank balance is $1,000, or perhaps you would say your bank balance is 1,000 rupees, you go to the bank and use 300 rupees, the balance is you have 700. The next time you go to bank and you draw another 200 and your bank balance comes down to 500 rupees. But this power is such a thing. If you draw 500 rupees, the balance is still 1000. If you draw out 800 rupees, the balance is still 1000 rupees. That is the type of power that we are talking about. And this power is unending power. The first point, the significance of this power is, is the helping power. Helping power, when Jesus traveled in Judea, Galilee, Samaria, and many parts of the world, there were many people wanting to see Jesus. Many people wanting to help or, or to seek the help of Jesus. And it, is very, it was very interesting when Jesus came to certain people and he often said, how may I help you? What can I do for you? He never wanted to force his will. He never wanted to empower his will upon us. Rather, he is a gentleman. He wanted to wait upon us. 
And he says, when we come to the Lord, when we come to the person of Jesus, he says, how can I help you? How may I help you? What can I do for you? And then Jesus helps them. When people were hungry, he fed them. When people were tired, he gave them the rest. When people needed healing, he provided healing. He healed them. Jesus was in the business of helping people. He was helping people in their crises. He was helping people in their journeys. No matter what things were happening, and today we have a person of Jesus. The name of Jesus, the power is, the power of Jesus helps us. Helping power in everything that we do. You wanted help in your situation? You need help in relationship issues? You need help in business issues? You need help in financial issues? You need help in, in, in uncertain times? Bible is reminding us the name of Jesus has this helping power. This helping power will be released into our lives. And the scripture says there is power in the name of Jesus. The power is the helping power. The second one is the healing power. The healing power is available. The healing power will be released when we come to the person of Jesus. When we understand the name of Jesus. I did some extensive research on synoptic gospels a while ago. When Jesus was ministering, the scripture writers, the gospel writers, the synoptic gospel writers were very clear to explain when Jesus was healing, the power was flowing in and through him. So when Jesus was ministering, the power was going or ministering, the power was going out of Jesus. What it simply means that Jesus was like a powerhouse. Jesus was like a power station, a self-generating power was in the person of Jesus. When he was healing, the power was going out of Jesus. The power was in the person of Jesus. The power is in the name of Jesus. Self-generating power. Power station. Power house was in the name of this Jesus. In James chapter 5 verse 14 and 15 we will read. If Jesus in the scripture reminds us if any of you are sick, invite the elders of the church and anoint and pray in the name of the Lord. You pray in the name of Jesus and the Lord will raise them up and the Lord will raise you up today. If you were to come and respond to the person of Jesus, if you believe in the name of Jesus and Jesus wanted to raise you up, raise you up, not just to raise thousands of years back, even today, even today in 2021, it is possible when we take the name of Jesus, you will be raised. The Lord wanted to raise you up. The Great Commission gives us a very clear instruction when you go into the field, when you travel to many places. Jesus said to his disciples, Jesus said to his apostles, when you lay hands and pray and the healing power will be released and it will so happen. Disciples of Jesus, apostles of Jesus, they traveled extensively and they did two things. They raised their hands and prayed in the name of Jesus and the power was released. And there were people who were healed. The scripture talks about that part. The scripture talks about that part. There is power in the name of Jesus, the healing power the helping power and the last one is the holding power jesus holds things together john chapter 1 verse 1 we would read jesus is the creator and he all holds things together he holds things together what do you think about when you hold things together when Sammy and Misha, when they were very young, the first time I was carrying them, I was unspeakable responsibility, unimaginable sense of awe 
I was lifting them. I was holding them in my both hands, both of them. I was so careful. I was so make sure every step mattered. I would make sure every step counted. I was not careless. I was not deliberate. Rather, I was holding them their precious cargo. Jesus Christ holds us. We are dear to him. He holds us. He holds everything together. The Bible reminds us. Did you know that God created you? Do you know that you're a child of God? And he holds you. In the scientists says, many scientists says, if our earth is one inch, either farther or away, there will be chaos in the universe. It's literally chaos. The Lord holds everything together. The Lord keeps everything moving together. It's like a glue. It's like a cement holds everything together. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is helping power. There is healing power. And there is holding power. If you can embrace the phrase called the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus can hold you can hold you. What a pleasant power that is in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 we would read, by his wounds we are being healed. The Lord desires to heal each one of us today. The Lord desires to heal each one of us today. Emotional wounds, physical wounds, psychological wounds, financial wounds, Whatever it may be, the Lord is interested to release the power of Jesus, to release the power in the name of Jesus, helping power, healing power, and holding power. We continue to seek what God has in store for us. The Bible reveals to us there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. We see the helping power, the healing power, the holding power. When you recognize these truths, when we understand these truths, when we incorporate these truths, you will be generous. You will be helpful to people if God begins to work in and through our lives. People would see that you are different. People would see that you are so driven by God and his purposes and you'll be generous. You always go an extra mile to help people because God's nature is that he was helping so you too will be helpful and not only really that you would see that you become a healing power would be released to you when you lay hands when you pray in the name of Jesus the power of God the power of Jesus flows in through in and through you and you will be seeing miracles. You would see people get changed. People see people will be healed. And there is a holding power. When you walk into a situation, when there is chaos, when there is uncertainty, when there is uh, uh, disturbance, when there is all types of tension, when you walk into a situation like that, people sense there will be sense of quietness. There will be peace. There will be calm. That is a power that you hold. That is a power that God wanted to release that into your life. Maybe you're helpful. Maybe you're kind. Maybe you're generous. Maybe you wanted to bring healing. You want to bring peace into your home, into your family's home, maybe into your friend's home. The first principle is there is power in the name of Jesus, helping power, healing power, holding power. And the second principle is there is promise in the name of Jesus. With the name of Jesus, there is a promise associated with that name. In many relationships, promises are broken frequently. People lose trust. They don't have trust. They're unable to 
trust someone again. Bible reveals to us that Jesus Christ makes a promise. He keeps a promise. No matter what, he will take us to the promised land. So what other promises are we talking about? There is a promise in the name of Jesus. The first promise I want to remind you is that if we choose to confess, if we choose to repent of our sins, our sins will be forgiven. Our sins will be wiped out. Our sins will not be remembered, the Bible says. If we confess our sins, he's faithful, meaning Jesus is faithful and cleanses from all unrighteousness. There is forgiveness available. Our sins will be removed. Our sins will be cleansed. Or our sins will be forgiven. Not only the promises of God reveals to us when we confess, when we repent, our sins will be wiped clean, but there will be refreshing. The Lord wanted to refresh your life. The Lord wanted to inject vitality strength into our lives psalm 46 verse 1 psalm 46 verse 1 we will read god is a refuge and strength and never present help in trouble and never present help in trouble no matter what you are facing no matter what we go through in this in life god is always available to help god is available all the time to come and give an extra hand are you hungry? The Bible says I'm the bread of life. Are you thirsty? The Bible says I'll give you the living waters. Is your soul needs rest? The Bible says Jesus says come unto me. Come unto me. I'll give you peace. I will give you rest to your souls. Today I'm asking you, are you tired? Are you exhausted? Do you experience fatigue in your life? You have come to the right place and Jesus is extending an invitation to whoever, whoever is listening, whoever is watching this program. If you're tired, if you're exhausted, if you experience fatigue, Jesus Christ is interested to make you promise that you will be renewed, you will be refreshed, you will be having recharge of this life there is energy you receive energy vitality strength stamina would come built into your life the lord wanted to refresh that is the promise the promise of god to us today is he wanted to bring refreshment to our lives and another promise god promises to us is that you will have eternal life the promise of eternal life this eternal life is possible this eternal life is available and this eternal life is free we don't have to work for it we don't have to earn it it's all we receive by faith in the name of jesus salvation is free the classic verse in the scriptures john chapter 3 verse 16 we will read for god so loved the world that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life eternal life there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus the power changes lives and there is promise in the name of Jesus what is the promise are we talking about he will going to forgive our sins he's going to renew and refresh our souls and he wanted to give an eternal life he wanted to give salvation to all of us whoever would ask how do we know for sure I want to remind you of something uh, Many years ago, when we often get married, usually what you do is you, you take a ring, a promise ring or an engagement ring and you give it to your fiance. And the ring is like a promise. The ring is like a promise. What you're saying to that person is that there's more to come, some bigger things to come. This is just a promise. This is just a sample what is going to come more. This is just a sample of what is about to come. If you're buying a new house or if you're buying a new another house, you are expected to put a down payment. You're expected to put a deposit and expecting a deposit, a down payment proves that property.
property will be yours. That property has been set aside. Nobody can able to buy. Nobody can able to pay down payment or nobody could make a deposit on it because you've been already paid the deposit. Listen to me carefully. Paul says, eternal life to all of us has been guaranteed because God has put a deposit on you. God has put a deposit into your life. God has put a deposit or a down payment in your life. And the down payment is the Holy Spirit is inside of us. The Holy Spirit is a deposit. The Holy Spirit is a promise to us. And then the scripture goes on to explain that God pours out his treasure. God pours his treasure in earthen vessels. Earthen vessels meaning we are all humans. We are all broken. We have no value of our own. But God pours his treasure. God pours his presence into our lives in the person of Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a deposit. The Holy Spirit is a promise. The Holy Spirit is a down payment. The whole eternal life is yours. The Lord has put a deposit on you. Did you know that? You have a, a deposit has been placed and an earthen vessel carries the treasure of God. The price of God is in the treasure. Amazing things. The truth. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is promise in the name of Jesus. And the third one. There is progress in the name of Jesus. There is progress in the name of Jesus. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 we would read. God is saying. God said to Joshua. Now my servant Moses is dead now. You will lead the children of Israel. Messengers come. Messengers die. Prophets come. Prophets die. Judges come, judges die. Presidents come and presidents die. But the purposes of God are everlasting. The purposes of God are long, are eternal. God's purposes don't die. God's purpose for Moses did not die with the death of Moses. But the purpose of God, the purposes of God lives on forever. The first thing we will recognize is that once we embrace the progress in the name of Jesus, we recognize we have a new name, we have a new identity, we have a new destiny, we have a new purpose to our lives. Progress meaning an opportunity to preach. A prog progress meaning an opportunity to get involved with the kingdom work. What I'm, what I'm trying to explain through this is that become a kingdom builder be a kingdom builder you work with the Lord you work in partnership with the Lord because Jesus is changing lives Jesus is transforming lives you become an ambassador when you become an ambassador God works in and through you you partner with God in the Old Testament God made a promise to David and said you will build my temple and then later on God chooses Solomon and Solomon builds the temple when Solomon built the temple listen to me carefully all traits are wanted all craftsmen were wanted all specialties are wanted to build the temple of God today in the 21st century you've been wanted you've been wanted your skills are wanted your expertise are wanted to build the kingdom of God do you know that God has given you the skills so you can participate in the building the kingdom of God we have this unique opportunity we have this unique privilege to work with God in building the kingdom of God if you were to ask me David what are you doing I'm building the kingdom of God through my preaching if you are a teacher be a good teacher if you are a preacher be a good preacher if you are a singer be a good singer if you are a computer programmer be a good computer programmer whatever the skill that God has entrusted recognize that skill 
use that skill and build for the kingdom of God. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is promise in the name of Jesus. There is progress in the name of Jesus. God is ahead of us. He's in front of us. He's about to do something very unique. He's about to do something very special. He's about to do something very significant and he needs your partnership in this. And today I'm asking you, we need partners to help build this program called Mosaic today. You want to be a partner? Pray with us, partner with us, visit our website, pass this on, links to others. The progress is in the name of Jesus. You partner with God. You partner in God in building his kingdom. The fourth one is there is provision in the name of Jesus. There is provision in the name of Jesus. What is the provision? The provision meaning salvation is only found in the person of Jesus Christ. The name of the Lord. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12 it says but as many as have received him he gave them the right he gave them the power to become the children of God. You know you have an opportunity to become the child of the living God. You can become the daughter of the living God. You can become the son of the living God. You can become a prince. You can become a princess of the living God. The Bible guarantees of your rights, privileges and responsibilities. I want to read a passage to you. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 we read we become the heirs and co-heirs with Christ we become heirs and co-heirs with Christ we may indeed share with his sufferings but we also share in his glory life is hard we experience challenges difficulties life hardships and sufferings but God is promising to us, whoever is listening, whoever is responding, whoever is curious to know that we too would participate, we too would take part in the share the glory of God. We also share in the glory of God. All we see right now is just a, a glimpse of it. Just a glimpse, a day would come, we would spend in the presence of God. That is the uh, blessed hope to all of us. In the name of Jesus, there is power, helping power, healing power, holding power. In the name of Jesus, there is promise, promise of forgiveness, promise of refreshment, promise of eternal life, progress. We have a new name, we have a new identity, new position, new destiny. We preach the gospel to the nations with your talents. You become part of the kingdom builder. You're called to build the kingdom of God. Dear, you're invited. Vacancy is still available. Come join partner with God and see what God is going to all do with your life. You have no clue whatsoever what he's capable of doing with your life. All you have to do is to say yes to him. All you have to do is to yield to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I'm ready for you. And the Lord would take up and use your life in such a way that you will be a blessing to the nations. When you recognize these eternal truths, when you recognize the importance of the truths, when you follow these truths, your life will be transformed. Whatever you're going through, whatever you've been experiencing, right this very moment, emotional challenges, physical challenges, financial challenges, build business related, family situations, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, if I were to ask you, if I give you a sheet of paper and ask, what are the challenges that you've been facing? I'm sure you can fill up pages after pages. You can fill up pages after pages. And I would say, give you only one password. I would give you only one key. That would give you only one answer to all your problems, to all your quests in life. Listen to me carefully. 
The answer is the name of Yeshua. The password is the name of Jesus. The key is the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you read Bible. In the name of Jesus, you pray. In the name of Jesus, you believe. In the name of Jesus, you proclaim. In the name of Jesus, you give. In the name of Jesus, you, you, you receive. And then, listen to me carefully, and then you get connected. As you do this, you get connected to this eternal supply. You get connected to this everlasting supply. You get connected to this unending supply. Get hold of the name of Jesus. Respond to that name. Internalize this name. Live by this name. Burn this name on your heart. Burn this name on your mind. And we'd see you become a channel for God. You become an instrument of God. You become what God's life flows in and through you. God pours his life into you. When people say, this is God because you don't act like a normal dude. You don't act like a normal guy. You, you'll be different. What a joy it is to know. What a privilege it is to know there is power in the name of Jesus. There is progress in the name of Jesus. And there is promise in the name of Jesus. And there is provision in the name of Jesus. I wanted to pray for you. Wherever you are, I want you to close your eyes. Father, I thank you, God, for this time that we've been able to learn the meaning of Jesus. The name of Jesus has power. May that power transcend into our lives. May that power be transferred to everyone who is watching our program today. Whatever we may be going through, whatever we may be facing, may you demonstrate once again that you're a caring God, a loving God, and you have the best interest for our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. announcements. First of all, I'd like to thank you for tuning into our services week after week as we continue to dive deeper into God's Word and worship Him through song and prayer. We would love to connect with you, whether that's through email or any other way. We'd love to hear from you. 
Your prayer requests are important to us so that we can pray with you as you encourage us as well. Next, I'd like to invite you to partner with us with your gifts and offerings. All gifts and offerings are tax deductible and the link to submit those is displayed just below. We thank you for your partnership. Finally, check out our website and share it with your friends and family as the Lord continues to bless us each and every week. See you next week, same time, same place. Until then, God's best be yours. Thank you. Hey, it's Michelle. I hope you've been enjoying our services. We are here for you every week. We are here to serve and empower you and your family. I'd like to invite you to become a global partner with Mosaic today. Together, we can take the gospel to the nations. Jesus is in the business of changing and transforming lives and is calling us to complete his unique task. Want to invest in the faith of the next generation? Global partners are needed to help support this ministry by committing to $100 per month. And remember, there is one life to live, one life to give, and one life to serve. Please check out our website and sign up to become a global partner today. Thank you. Hey, David here. I'm glad you're able to uh, join us today. Uh, we always have a tradition here. Before we end the service, we close with the Lord's Prayer and the benediction. And the Lord's Prayer and benediction is so important. We try to follow and lift the name of Jesus. One day disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, please teach us to pray. And Jesus taught them this prayer. No matter what languages that you speak, no matter on what continent you may be listening or watching this program, recite in your own language, in unison. It shows that we are lifting the name of Jesus. It shows that we are depending upon the name of Jesus. It shows us that we are following the person of Jesus. Please bow with me. Our Father God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and to keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining our program. I'll see you next week, same time and same place. Until then, may God's best be yours. Shalom and peace and stay safe. This program is made possible by gifts from viewers like you. Thank you. Please check us out on social media. Check out our website and please share it with your family and friends. Thank you for choosing to tune into our program. May God's best be yours. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.